<laughs> well, welcome back to our little gardening show. We got Sammy here with me. We're kind of playing around with the grow mix. It is time to start our cucumbers, watermelon, and all that good stuff. <clears throat> it takes uh, four to five weeks. Usually for these to sprout and get to the point where you can take them out to the green. We can set them out and all that. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with them. I think my plan now is gonna be <clears throat> once they are going in here, probably transplant them early on to cups, so we can bottom water them and all that, and take them out to the greenhouse. <laughs> But we got some decisions to make. Because we got quite a bit of stuff. I still got straight eight cucumber seed. Hoping this might not be good. I was back in the fall of 2014, so. That was good, a good cucumber, though. Water that, you know, two and a half years old. You know, and that seed only lasts a couple years, so. Um, we got our black diamond watermelon, which we, I was really surprised at how well that did <clears throat> last year. And we got probably about 12 really nice sized watermelons. The flavor were pretty good. I did get a tip <clears throat> from a uh, uh, guy that watched the channel telling me about watering them, especially towards uh, you know two weeks prior to harvest to basically water them sparingly to sweeten them up. So we grow that variety again this year, I'll follow that advice for any of these varieties. I've got Moon and Stars, which we've grown that before. It's a really good one. Hey Daddy, didn't you get any did you get any Tigger Melon? Um no I didn't. Aww. We've got some uh Alibaba I tried growing that last year. <clears throat> it did not and seem what happened my seedlings, I don't know what happened, I think they died or whatever, and we ended up going to the store to get some? To get the black diamond, and they did really well. So you ordered a pack? So we got crookneck squash, we got gray squash. Have you ever done that <clears throat> yellow squash? Um, we have done that before. But I've never Mom wanted us to get this, so we're, we're definitely going to grow that one. I, you know, the Blue Hubbard. Didn't do good because I was real excited about them last year, but the squash bugs got them before we could get anything. Well, you only got one plant that wasn't very good. Substantial harvest, so I'm a little leery <clears throat> of trying that again because I know that we have a problem with squash bugs. And so the smaller variety um, squash and things seem to be a better bet because they're pretty prolific. They put on, they ripen fast, whereas the Blue Hubbard is not so quick. Hey, Daddy, that. maybe you could just plant one well... One or two blue hubbard because they're really big when they're done. Um, and like if you found this little spray that wouldn't hurt the plants and it it will keep the squash bugs away, you could use that. Yeah, we could try. <clears throat> I um straight eight cucumbers, that was an excellent cucumber, uh, to grow, very prolific. What about black beauty? Black Beauty, they did all right last year. It didn't do super well. <clears throat> Until, like, again, the squash bugs, cucumber beetles. But didn't we get, like, 20? We, we got some pretty good squash. And you saved one of four seed and one of these for seed. Yeah, so what we might do, I mean, we've got plenty of seed. We may just do a row of each and then just pick out what we want to, you know, go with. So we got our grow mix. We're going to make our rows <clears throat> with our stamper. Okay, the water all dirty. But don't do that. Oh, that one's okay. You can put the whole thing in. So we've got our, our template on there. We can go ahead and push down on that. And then lift up. There's all the holes. And there's the holes. <clears throat> Though we're not going to plant that many. So 
So what we can do is, um, how many rows we got here? Three, what? six, seven, eight rows. We've got eight varieties. Which ones do you want to do first? We can kind of... Uh, we can use this for the seeds we can put in here. Knowing that they're going to get big pretty quick. We can kind of get the spacing how we want it. Okay, um... Dad, wait, which one do you just wait do? a minute, bud. I put it as like newspaper stuff, bud. They're chilling down on that. So see. Hey, Daddy, you know what you could have done? Got the, a super big bowl and done this. Oh, yeah? You could do that. I think so, huh? something up there. I thought I was doing a crisscross pattern, but I guess not. Oops. What are you doing? Making sure the pattern is good. Here we go. Which one do you want to do, Daddy? There's black beauties, blue hopper, crook neck, straight eight, which might not do very well, gray squash, black diamond, um, moon and stars, and... Well, like I said, we got um, one row for each of them, so we can do... Sorry, Papa. We can do all the varieties, bud. <clears throat> So we'll get started on that. Basically, we're going to plant. Um, I want to start with gray squash. Or at least two seeds per, per cell. And then as they sprout, once they're up a, a couple inches, we will transplant them into their individual pots. And pick the super good ones. Yeah. Careful, don't rip that, okay? Okay, just kind of looking at things and knowing how vigorous these things can grow. We're taking a different approach. What I did was just took my finger and rubbed down four rows, put a line here. So four of our varieties will go on this side of the tray, four on the other side, and we can plant the seeds kind of close, just lay them in the furrow. <coughs> Water them, give them everything they need, and the ones that sprout out are the ones we keep. Transplant those in the cups you know, to continue growing. These trays are they're nice and everything, but for like long term, like, you know, much past a couple weeks, they're not that good for at least I'm not I'm finding that they're not that good for like the bigger bigger stuff that's gonna develop, you know, pretty good roots pretty quick. They're excellent for lettuce and for your leafy greens and things like that but the other things you know they're good to sprout in there but they really need to be transplanted to bigger areas so anyway we're going to get started just laying them maybe a half inch apart or whatever you know to get some hopefully some a couple to germinate and we'll kind of go from there we don't cover them yet, up yet because we want to see where the rows are so we can label them okay We'll cover them all up at the end. Let's put these seeds up first before you move on, okay? And actually, let's double this. So there's more seeds and there can yeah, be more of a and chance. we can pick the best ones in case something doesn't sprout, right? We're 
labeling the tray as we go. And then we'll put a piece of tape on the other side and label the other varieties. He just planted the Kirknack, the yellow squash. Is that right, bud? Yes. Kirknack. Summer squash, okay. These are the three we have. <coughs> Another row, there's the blue yeah. rubber. We're going to see if this does better this year. Yeah. Hopefully it does so we get some good. Can't they weigh up to like five pounds? Forty pounds, but. Oh. So they can like get, they can like get as 15, big as Fifteen, it says right there on the back of the package. What does that say at first line? Fifteen to forty pounds. Yeah, it's big squash. Bro. So like the little littlest would be probably like fourteen. Crazy, isn't it? And these are huge seeds. Yeah, they are. It's because that's a big plant. Hopefully those seeds are still good, and we'll find out. It was in 2017. Look at this huge one. I bet that one's gonna do good. Hope so. One way we could test the seeds, if we had a glass of water, we could throw them in there. And if they sink to the bottom, they're still good. If they rise to the top, they're dead. How about we put, well, how about we put two of them in there? Well, just go ahead and we're just, we we'll leave it like oh. this. Could we put this one in? Yeah, we can move this one over just a little bit. All right, now we'll go. We gotta finish labeling this before we get too far ahead. All right. Kind of neat, just looking at the different seeds and the varieties and how different some of them are. You know, again the blue hover, just the size compared to the summer squash, and then we've got our cucumbers. It's really small, and then, then we get these? to our watermelons. It got you know speckled. That's our uh, black diamond. Those are let's cool. let's do a few more in them, bud. Cause you. I want a lot of water on it. Oops. This is what they look like. Yeah. Tons of splotches on them. We're doing a lot of those also. I mean, there's some time and expense in starting your own seeds, and you know, you don't always succeed. Let's see what these stars. You know, like my tomatoes are a perfect example. Last year they didn't you know, really. Last year and then this year they're not doing too well because. These are almost the exact same. We only have a few left of these. We should only no, use a minute. few. So we got black diamond. And what what is this one? Oh. Just moon and stars. Yes, we okay. need to label these two first so that what, we don't well, get mixed up. Well, I can remember it. Moon and stars. Moon and stars is third. Go ahead and plant all those, but well, most of them. Fill, fill the row up. And one of the things with starting seeds is that you just have to they take a lot of attention. <clears throat> you know, one thing I'm learning with the greenhouse is it's really easy for them. Two. To get stressed, you know, That's if you amazing. can't, if you're not keeping an eye on you the, put the water those... and stuff. My dad's doing a pretty good job over there, but that's that's enough. But we got a ton in there. That's all of them. That's all of them. Yeah. You know, there's some left. Okay. Oh, just a little. You anyway, with the greenhouse, it gets so hot so quick, and <clears throat> it's hard to regulate that temperature without having a fan and other other things. I don't know. You don't have to do that. Here. Oh, there. Here. Well, which one's this? Last one. Alibaba. Last one. Yeah, there's only a little left. That's fine. You should get some more of those. How big are these seeds? Do you have any? <coughs> Anyway, the variety is just amazing. How really? many? Oh, uh, there's some in really? here. Really? There should be more than that. We'll just plant all of them here. Go ahead and plant all of those, bud. We need to get lots more of these and those. 
Because how long have we been doing this, Alibaba? Well, we tried growing them last year, and like I said, something got to the plant, so we know replanting, I think, or... And they didn't do too well still. <clears throat> no, actually, they did do well. We had the uh, black diamond. And that was one thing I noticed about the uh, the squash bugs and um, they really like cucumber the... beetles and all that. They, they gravitated toward the squashes. They left the watermelon alone. Something about the watermelon they didn't like compared to the other things that And then when there. we cut all of that stuff off, like the cucumbers and stuff, <clears throat> then they started coming to the tomatoes and corn. Yeah, the cucumber beetles started migrating over to the rest of the garden. Which was bad. All right, so there we have it. We're going to label up these varieties here. And then we're going to just gently cover the seeds. We're going to water them in. We're going to turn on the heat mat to about 80. Keep this tray moist and covered with paper towel um, to keep the moisture in. Probably within a couple days, we'll start seeing sprouts. Uh, within a week, we'll probably have enough there. We'll be able to transplant out of this tray into cups, into a a nice 1040 quad tray that I've got, <clears throat> and we can take those out. So this is the heat mat? To the garden, yes, this is the heat mat. Oh, and how they, they sprout is they like, think they this respond, is the sun. Well, they respond to the heat first, bud. <clears throat> the heat and the moisture gets them to sprout. Once they sprout and they put their leaves out, they start absorbing the energy from the lights. And they think that's the sun, so they yeah, keep kinda, on coming out. Kind of an artificial light there that works out. Hey, so. Daddy, I think this blue Hubbard is going to do the best. I hope, bud. So we'll get those covered. Um, we may even put just a thin layer of worm castings over it just so there's a little bit of a nutrient source. But again, the plan sure. is, yeah, but the plan is that once they're, they're pretty well sprouting, we'll pick out the best ones and we'll transplant those to their own little cup. So. Or, you, well, um, probably going to take lots of the straight out. Yeah, hopefully we get a lot. So, all right, well, I guess that's it for now. Until next time, happy gardening. Bye. Okay, I thought I'd just show you a quick kind of closing shot of what we've ended up with. I got my rose marked off, and what we do is I just put this paper towel over here, which allowed me to just dump a few cups of water on the tray to effectively water everything without disturbing the seeds that we just planted. Uh, and this is also going to help lock moisture in. And also keep moisture towards the top as it, the paper towels as they dry. It's going to draw moisture to the top where the seeds are uh, to help them germinate. <clears throat> We've got the heat mat plugged back up. It's set at 80 so it's climbing. I just pushed the probe through in the middle where we didn't have any planted. So we are good to go, and within a couple days we should have some sprouts. So uh, I guess that's it for now. Until next time, happy gardening.